It's Ready News Review with America's independent voice. Rob Ready. Ready. You know, I, I like whipping people. Do I need to whip you too? I hope not. This is the pressing news that you need to know. I'm not concerned with what you think you need to know. I'm not concerned with what you might want reported and the way you might want it reported. Voted one of the top 10 favorite talk show hosts in America. I am interested in getting people to open up their eyes to the political system and understand that systematic change is needed. That's the only way we're going to get the change. He's the undisputed king of independent talk. It's Rob Ritten. This is Ready News Review, the show. Rob Redding, America's independent voice, giving you the pressing news that you need to know. This is the show they talk about. This is the show they fear. This is Redding News Review, unrestricted. Welcome to the program. It is the end of the week, the last day. I appreciate you for listening. This is the weekend edition of the program. I've been waiting all week long to talk about some of the things that I've been observing this week on social media and the social atmosphere that we're in. And just some people that are sitting back gloating, watching it all because they believe America is going to fall away and we're going to be no more. And it might happen, but these people are not concerned about it happening. They're actually, you know, joyful about it happening. I want to start with what we've seen. And I've had an inbox of people who have sent me emails. I've had people that have sent me stuff on Facebook. I've had friends. I've had family get so upset. I've been upset. You've been upset. I've been sleepless. You've been sleepless. And let me tell you, even the people that are watching for our ultimate ruin have been sleepless too. And that's one of the things I want to lead with because... Raise your hand if you've heard people who have said crazy things that you just want to ch- choke the hell out. I mean, like it, whether it's socially on, you know, a, a commute home, whether it's at work, whether it's been a video, whether it's been on Facebook. I mean, I think we're all pretty much tired of each other right now. I think we all need a break from each other. Most people are just in hiding, uh, you know, after what happened on the election day, we all were kind of zombies walking around. And what's interesting is many of us, we, we, we were, were kind of shocked. And I don't understand why anybody that listened to this program was shocked because most of you had advanced notice of what happened. Unless you, unless you didn't listen to the Friday show until Wednesday, and that's that happens sometimes. I understand some of you get busy with life. You got kids. You've got job. You've got you know. You've got your own business. You're running. You, you're traveling. Rob, I was out of the country. I didn't know. I didn't listen to Friday show until Wednesday. I got an email from a person who you know he goes back and forth between the UK. And he's one of our UK subscribers. And and so he said, Rob, I didn't even listen to Friday show. I wish I had. I had no, I wouldn't be so shocked. I wouldn't be so upset. And I understand that you're shocked and upset. Some of you, you didn't believe that when on Friday, I told you that Trump was going to win last Friday. I, I don't, you know, think that you trusted that I knew what I was talking about, though. You pay me to talk. This is what you pay me to do. You pay me, you know, as a subscriber of this program, you pay me to, to do what I do. So what's interesting is some people are just in such total shock about this, and I hope none of my listeners are because I, I try to make sure that I give you the pressing news that you need to know. There's some people that talk about things that, you know, they're extraneous to things that need to be discussed. But on this program, it's a unique program in that we are always giving you the foresight of things that are yet to happen. That is very different from a lot of other talk shows. I, I, I was having a conversation last night with my dear friend, Wade, which actually I'm going to reference a little bit later on in the program. And he was saying, you know, Rob, you know, Wade's our president of our company. And he said, you know, Rob, this broadcasting that you've been doing lately is is the next level. It, it, it's just different than anything I've ever heard. I've listened to you for years. And the things that we're doing on this program are just above and beyond what we did when we were winning every award out there the industry has to give, whether it's 100 Most Important Talk Show Hosts, whether it's, you know, the top 10, whether it's, you know, 
it's all access profile. I mean, these are the, the top awards that you can get in the industry. And one of the reasons why I'm doing some of my best broadcasting right now is because, well, I just listen to my intuition, my spirit, my gut, and it tells me what I need to know. And I know exactly what people are doing before they even, you know, say that that's exactly what's going on. So when I get a chance to tell you about things that are coming, I really think you should listen and I, and it, not listening to the program for long periods of time when you're a subscriber, first of all, isn't smart because you're subscribing, but it's also not smart because you'll get taken by storm by things and you'll be in shock because the rest of America's in shock. They're like, well, I thought it could happen. Well, if you thought it could happen, then you're not in shock about it. So, I mean, it, it, these are the consequences for when you do not do what you feel like you should do. Now, if you didn't feel like you should go vote for Hillary Clinton, you shouldn't be in shock. You know, there's some people that are like, I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. I don't like Hillary Clinton. So you shouldn't be in shock. You know, as a matter of fact, I would argue that most of these people are not in shock. They 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 actually saw this coming because they didn't they didn't participate. If you don't participate, then you know what might happen. Now, you, you might say, Rob, you know, you're the independent. You're the person that is a non-voting independent. You're the non-conformist. You're the you're the person that says, well, I'm a journalist and people try to track my vote. And and so you don't want to be hemmed up as a Democrat or Republican or anything like that. And you're absolutely right. I'm that person that does not vote. And I'm the person that tells you that I don't vote. I haven't voted in years. So I, I, I knew what could happen. But I also knew that, you know, living in New York also, even if I wanted to vote, that this state is not in play, that it doesn't make a difference because I understand how things work, which is a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother thing that people were upset about, which I want to talk about also in this section. So when people get to shock, shock easily goes to fear. And so shock becomes fear. And that's the problem. The people's shock has gone to fear, and fear is never a good thing. It is not a good thing to be fearful of anything in life. And the reason why I say that, because, I mean, we go through life, and our parents tell us that stove is hot. If you put your hand on the stove, it's going to get burned. That's typically what happens. But there are some circumstances where you can put your hand on the stove, and it won't get burned. Like, Rob, what, what, what instances are those? Well, first of all, the stove could be off. And you're not going to get burned if you put your hand on the stove. Now, that seems like a very straightforward thing. But I'm, I'm saying if, if the stove is not on, you won't get burned if you touch the stove. The second thing is, is that, well, you know, if you wear a mitten, your 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 mitten is going to burn first. You say, well, wait a minute, you know, oh, wait a minute, my mitten's on fire. I need to take my mitten away from the stove. And so that's just another example. So if you're putting something on the stove and it's far enough away from the pl the flame, then you're going to be fine, right? I mean, these are all intuition, you know, things that you could do that, that would actually stop you from getting. So it's not an absolute. There are no absolutes in life. So when you think about what happened with the election on Tuesday, there are so many people that they're just like, well, you know, I, I the world's coming to an end. They're running around because... People have told them that this is the case because people have told them to worry. That's the reason why I think fear is a bad thing. You know, if we had people that feared, that leaders that feared, we wouldn't have Martin Luther King. We wouldn't have Malcolm X. We wouldn't have John F. Kennedy. We wouldn't have Robert F. Kennedy after his brother died. He still did what he did. We wouldn't have some of the greatest heroes in our time. If we had people that feared, we wouldn't have Muhammad Ali. We wouldn't have a lot of people that have done a lot of amazing things if they had feared. Fear is one of the things that holds us back. So what fear also will do is make you do stupid things and make you make crazy decisions. And see, this is the thing that I, I, I guard against. Anytime I'm fearful, I actually have the exact opposite response. And the response is, is when I'm fearful, I actually stop doing anything. The first thing I do is stop. Now, this is not in the way that most people stop doing things. Most people, when they, they're fearful, they stop doing things that matter. Like, for instance, when someone tells them that they can't, I don't know, uh, climb a mountain, Mount Everest, they're going to die if they climb Mount Everest. The first thing I do, you know, is, well, not decide to maybe clown Mount Everest tomorrow. But the first thing they do is decide that they're not going to clown Mount Everest forever. You know, like they're going to stop completely. I don't stop what I'm doing. I think about, okay, this person is telling me something. I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm listening to their counsel. I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm listening to what's going on. 
And I'm saying, well, you know, mm, you know what? There might be something there. Where there's smoke, there might be fire. Because, you know, that's another thing. You know, where there's smoke, there's always fire. That's not necessarily true. You know, there, 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 there's, there's smoke, but that, that, that might be some fake news. It might be some fake reporting that's going on behind. Or maybe the, the, the smoke is not related to what you think it is. So I'm not, my, my conventional wisdom is not always the same as other conventional wisdoms out there that, that other people might say, hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking. It's not necessarily the same thing I'm thinking. So when people tell you that you're going to die climbing Mount Everest, my idea is like, well, how can I climb Mount Everest and not die? Not that I'm going to stop climbing Mount Everest. That means I might not go today, but that means I probably will go tomorrow. I might even buy a life insurance policy just in case I die, so everything's taken care of, so I don't, I'm not a burden on my family. I will say to my family, don't look for me. I know I'm probably going to die. Don't look for me. So don't expend a whole lot of money on a search team, a rescue, and all of that. Just know that I love you, and that's it, because I understand that most people that do this die. I might not make it out. I'm just letting you know. So some people are not this fatalistic about their view, but this is important. I know you're saying, Rob, what does this have to do with anything? I, I promise it will make sense in a moment. See, fear causes us to do things that are not advised, all right? And so most people are not leaders, they're sheeple. Most people, they, they're not like me. And this is the reason why I, it's important to draw a delineation. It doesn't mean I'm better, it just means I'm different. That, that means that most people, when they hear people, other people panicking, they begin to panic. When they see other people being anxious, they begin to you know get anxious so my inclination is when i see these things is to do nothing it's literally to do nothing it's literally not to overreact to do the exact opposite of what everybody else is doing and to think about what's happening to to literally think my way through see i'm a thinker a lot of people that's the other thing forget leaders a lot of people are not thinkers they just kind of see things and they feel like they have to react immediately and so what's interesting is that sometimes you have to do that, right? I'm, I'm a Capricorn, so I, let me just be honest about it. I, I war against these things, and sometimes, you know, I'm the practical side, too, and I'm just kind of like, well, you know, what's going on? What should I do? And so there are some times when you do have to react immediately. I've learned as the Capricorn, sometimes I can't. I say, well, is this, is, is this my fear talking, the fear, the Capricorn fear of I'm just dead set in my ways and I don't, I, I don't want to change? Or do I really need to act now? I mean, is it really required or is this hype? I have to I have to make a split second decision and sometimes I have to act. Sometimes I have to jump on opportunities in business has been like this too. I have to jump on opportunities immediately. And and sometimes my practical Capricorn side says, you don't have enough money for that. Um, that's too many resources. You can't you can't do that right now. Or what will people think? And I started to, you know, realize a little bit, you know, when I got further down the road, when I got a little bit older, that, you know, I don't care what people think. That, you know, you can't be rich in society saving money. A lot of people think that, you know, you, you can you can you can get rich saving money. You can go to the poorhouse saving money because you miss opportunities. Sometimes you have to take advantage of opportunities. Sometimes you have to take risk. All right. And sometimes risk is required, but not all the times, because most of the time, most people are telling you that, you know, these risks that are out there are going to kill you. Like Donald Trump being president of the United States is going to kill you. It's bad. Now, I'm not saying it's not bad, because remember, I already told you that Donald Trump was going to become president. Now, if I already knew this two weeks ago, well, it was coming on two weeks now or a week ago. If I already knew this, then it seems like that I'd be talking to you from Canada right now, right? Or I'd be talking to you from Brussels right now in Belgium, right? Because I knew this. I saw it coming. So that lets you know right there. I'm not I'm still in New York, by the way. Remember, I've got an art show on Monday. So or on Tuesday, actually. We set up on Monday, it's on Tuesday. So the point is, is that I haven't run and I'm not fearful. I'm thinking about all the things that I've been hearing from all of my friends and family and loved ones. I'm thinking about it, but I'm not I'm not running. The practical side of me says, you know, well, you should, you know, conserve some things, save some money. You should buy a ticket, consider looking at some prices. Blah. That's the practice. But sometimes I have to war. it. Like I said, that's the Capricorn. I have to war against that side of me. What is the moral of all of this that I'm telling you? Stop being fearful. This is the, that's the first piece of advice I would give you is to stop fearing, to stop 
going back to what your family always told you about the stove being hot or that 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 plume of smoke always means that there's fire it doesn't always mean that that's the first thing i would tell anybody because this helps me i'm telling you not not what i you know just believe but what i need to hear myself because i i have to hear literally myself tell you these things again because i have to literally breathe like literally when i saw donald trump get elected and and literally what we said on friday on this program actually happened i literally had to i listened to my words back on friday and i said this is so eerie that it's absolutely dead on and you could say, well, it's it, it's just it's a coincidence, whatever. But there have been too many coincidences in this show where I've called things dead on. So it, very rarely am I wrong about things when I talk about them. And the reason why is because I follow my gut, my spirit. I know what's going on with what I've observed. And I, I'm, I'm pretty cognizant of what can happen in the parameters of what can happen and how racist this country is. Many times when I talk about these issues, because I think very deeply about it. Remember, I told you that's the thinking part, which most people don't do. In times of crises, the other thing that you need to do is start to think. All right? So we, we've already said the first thing you need to do is stop fearing. And that means sometimes do nothing. And then number two is think. Think about what exactly is happening and is it true? I remember the first test I told you for this, you know, this show is when I watch news and when I, when I get ready for the program is I start to think about what does this mean? Is it true? A lot of times I ask, is what people are saying, you know, about something, is it true? Is it true that, for instance, Donald Trump is a racist? Yes, I believe Donald Trump is a racist. See, I, 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 I believe everything I've told you, Donald Trump is a racist and the 100 day plan, which I told you about earlier this week, is detrimental to this country. So we know that in my mind, let me just say this in my mind, in my processing, that this is true. All right. The question is, is will he have the ability to do the things that he wants to do? Well, let's take a look at it. He has a Congress that is Republican largely and some Democrats that balance out the equation and will stop him from being able to just ram anything through the Senate. He can get away with doing it in the House of Representatives, but he does have some hurdles in the Senate. But we got a lot of conservative Democrats that will probably vote with Republicans because they're scared. That I told you, fear, that's where fear is a bad thing. Fear is a very, very bad thing. So we can say he has both houses. And I don't think it's going to be as difficult for him to do a lot of the things that he wants to do as some people think that it is. Like, for instance, repeal and replace. I don't even think he's going to replace Obamacare. He's going to repeal Obamacare. That's part of it. Then this whole school choice thing. In other words, we don't want black and brown kids going to school with niggers. That's part of it. That That is part of what he believes and what he wants to do. So so these are all things that like the, the, the free trade, NAFTA, like uh, the fact that he wants to open up Keystone, the fact that he wants to have more coal. He wants to, uh, to, to go back on global warming. He wants to um, look at the visa program and restrict Muslims that come into this country. So there's some people who are really concerned. So Congress, I think, is amenable to a lot of these things, where some people don't think that that can happen. I think that that is actually the case. Let's look at our, our judicial branch. Of course, we know that he has the ability to put some judges in the office. So, I mean, it, it's one of those things where he's going to do that. He's got the votes to do it. And I think we're going to have a real hard time on our hands. So I, I'm, I'm thinking about this and I, and I think about it. And so I understand that, yes, there's a real danger to Donald Trump. I knew that on Friday when I told you he was going to be elected. So what do you do about it? That's the thing that bothers me about what I've seen. See, on social media, I've had friends, I've had family, I've had loved ones, I swear to God, say some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And I, I, I just, I'm inundated. I, had, I literally almost threw my phone this morning. I had such a headache. With people who are protesting and burning shit down and ripping shit up, and they they are so upset. And I'm just kind of like, I, I saw this woman this morning who literally shit. He was, she was shitting. She took a dump on a sign of Donald Trump's and then wiped her shit all over the sign. Some people say feces, but I, I don't want to even say that. I just want to say shit. 
She shit on the sign. I'm not joking. I've watched a video of a woman shitting in broad daylight on a street corner on a sign and and, and literally take her shit and, 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 and wipe it all over the side. Now, I've had people, that's one range of it. And then I've had people who have inboxed me and say, hey, Rob, look at this. There was a woman in Louisiana who was beaten up because she, you know, supports Hillary Clinton. And they said, this is what we're going to do. There, at my old school at Marshall University, I got an email alert today talking about, you know, as soon as one of these frat boys tweeted something like this, that, you know, as soon as Trump wins, I'm going to grab the first woman I see by the pussy. And the, the only reason why I even know about this is because I got an alert from the president of the university and the, the president of the university says, I apologize for university communications being used in this way. This is the kind of this is the kind of stuff that fear does to people. Fear, anxiety, anticipation, you know, that people don't think they suspend thinking. They suspend they suspend thinking and they act immediately. And that's not always the best thing. That's not always the best thing because the fire, remember, let me take you back to the burner. The fire is not always hot. The fire is not always on. And the smoke doesn't necessarily mean that there's fire in the way that you believe that there might be fire. So what's interesting is there's so many people who have said such crazy things. Like, for instance, this, let me give you this, this, for instance, there are so many people that want to repeal the electoral college. And so I, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I'm like, OK, so the thing that makes us America is the fact that we have an electoral college. And see, this is the this is the dangerous part of the And this is almost gets to the third part of what I, I'm going to say. This is where people who don't want America to succeed. What this is what they want you to do. They want you to completely destroy our system that, that, that they're looking at at us and they're saying, and, and some of these people are within this country, they're looking at us and they're saying, yes, this is exactly what we want you to do. See, here's the thing. If Hillary runs around talking about the Russians are responsible for all of these leaks and the Russians are doing this and the Russians are doing that, then what about the Russians putting us into a constitutional crisis where we decide that we want to dump our own electoral college because Hillary Clinton didn't win the electoral vote. See, this is this is the part where I'm I'm different than a lot of people. I actually think. See, there's some people that want Hillary to win so bad that they're willing to throw away everything America is. See, this is not a third world country. We don't tear our country. And I've seen the protests in Oakland. I've seen the protests. And I remember I, I was sitting, you know, with my, my niece. We were sitting at a restaurant in New York. And I, what's interesting is we were sitting there. We were talking about going to a protest in Union Station. And I thought about it and I said, well, I mean, it'd be interesting to go to this protest. But at the same time, what are we protesting? We're protesting the results of an election. We're protesting white women who literally heard the same statements that you and I did. More than 50, what is it, 56% of white women voted for Donald Trump, even though this man said he wants to grab women by the pussy. All right? So we're protesting the results of a democratically held election. That's what we're protesting. We're protesting the fact that our election system for all of these years continues to work and thrive and is the envy of the world. People envy the democracy that we're in. That's one of the whole reasons why we're fighting to keep immigrants here in the first place, right? Because they envied the country that we are and they came here because this country is great. That's why they're here. See, one of the things I don't want you to ever forget is that I say that I'm not the black independent voice. I don't say that I'm the minority independent voice, but I say I'm America's independent voice. OK, that means that I believe America is one of the greatest nations on the face of the earth. I do believe America is great and I believe it is great. And the promise of American democracy is the most important value. And it is my responsibility as the media and as a talk show host to make sure that we live up to the promise of democracy. I do that by being a check and balance at readynewsreview.com and with Reading News Review Unrestricted on these white racist supremacist bastards and make sure that we get our just desserts of what our constitution is supposed to duly deliver to us. Now, 
Now that you understand this is what my premise is and my purpose is, then when I see people who are within our own country, now forget for a minute the Russians, I'm talking about people that are liberals, that are progressives, that love this country like I love this country, they just love it in a different way, that want to repeal our electoral college because Donald Trump is president of the United States of America. I look at these people like they are crazy. I, you know, I literally had a friend who I consider one of the smartest people in the universe. All right, he's one of the, sm I, don't, I don't deal with stupid people, okay? If you're around me, if you're in my circle, if you are in a situation with me and I'm in day-to-day -day contact with you and I choose to be in day-to-day -day contact with you, if you're in my circle of people, you're in my network, you are smarter than I am. Most people that are around me are smarter than I am. He's one of those people. He literally asked me today on Facebook, he said, have you heard anything about the electoral college being repealed do you think it will happen? And I just literally had to throw my phone. And the reason why I had to, I didn't throw it, but I, I thought about throwing it. Mentally, in my mind, I threw it. The reason why is because he's a very smart person. Listen, he's a very, his mother's been very sick lately. And he's at home. He's doing, he's scared. He's fearful. And there's so many scared and fearful people. I understand it. I get it. See, this is a part that you might forget about me, but I'm one of those people that love this country, but I also can love it from afar. I've done what a lot of people have considered and are doing and left this country before, but I left it under a different pretense than most people. See, racism kills people. The anxiety and fear of racism kills people. So one of the reasons why I left this country is because I didn't want to deal with that anymore. And so I left, and I was still America's independent voice, but I lived in Europe. So I, I know what it's like to leave a country behind and be gone for eight months. I know what that's like. I know what it looks like. I know what it's like to be so fed up with police dogging you in the street, fear of being beaten up, fear of being jailed. And that's the good stuff that can happen to you. Forget being killed or beaten to death by the police. That is what happens in this country, okay? This is the reason why, whether I was there or whether I was here, whether I'm here or there, as I always say, at the end of the day, I'm always about making this country live up to the promise of democracy. Now, these people who are good liberals, who are good progressives, who are good Americans, some of you are literally hitting me. And then this is not the only person, my friend. It's not the only person, but I've had people who have sent me stuff, who are listeners to this show. And that's why I'm on your ass right now, because you would undo the democracy that we have. And this is, this is where people who don't like us, who even live here, who don't like democracy, who don't like the constitutional representative democracy that we have, are laughing at us and hoping we do just that. They're hoping we undo everything that is America. All right. They're they're hoping that we do everything to undo what our founding fathers who were white, who didn't look like us, but wrote beautiful things in a document that we're going to make them live up to and that we're going to make them responsible for. Those things are the things that I'm responsible for delivering on for you. That's the reason why I'm America's independent voice. So to the point. To deliver a blow to our electoral college is disastrous to our country, and I cannot allow it. To look at these people who are shitting on signs that are protesting what? Protesting a democratically held election. Protesting Donald Trump becoming president of the United States of America, something that I told you was going to happen. So you're not shocked by this, so you shouldn't really be living in fear. All right? You're not shocked by this because I told you it was going to happen. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing where you literally need to literally stop what you're doing and do nothing. Stop. Just stop everything. Because most of you are looking like assholes right now. You're looking like assholes belly aching about some guy who it literally is a racist. He's a supremacist. And yes, I agree with you can do all the things that he wants to do. Literally. There's some people in denial about this. See, I'm not in denial. I understand that he is going to be a disastrous president. He might literally be the last president we have. But if that is the case, that is our fate. 
That is where we are in life. This is literally the, but I am not going to be the person that dismantles the greatest country in the world because we have one bad election. Because your ass decided that you really silently wanted Hillary Clinton so bad that you didn't go vote for her. That you didn't do what you were supposed to do if you felt like you truly felt like Hillary Clinton was the best answer. Most of you didn't. If you didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, there's a reason why you didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. If feminism is real, there's a reason why it's been disproven and dis debunked. You had white women, almost 60% of them, vote for a guy who wants to grab them by the pussy over a woman. So what does that tell you about society? But now we want to dismantle. We literally want to dismantle our country because of one bad president. That makes us bad. Forget him being a bad president. That makes us bad people. That's what makes me upset. If anything, that makes me more upset than anything else. We are not going to be the undoing of ourselves. Our argument is that Donald Trump is going to be the undoing of America. Not that we are going to undo ourselves. It is our action right now that's hurting the country. It is our action right now that is undermining the country. Now, with that being said, there have been a lot of protests. There have been a lot of people who have said a lot of things. I want to talk about the protesters for a second. And I want to say that you guys, I want to give you some credit because I know I've been very hard on you. I want to give you some credit and say that you have actually been handling this a lot better than most people. Let me let me explain that. If Donald Trump had won, and most people don't look at it this way, because I, this is this is where I'm the thinker part, because this is why you guys have been acting, and why you guys have been posting on Facebook, and why you guys have been posting on social media, and why you guys have been filling up my inbox. Well, Rob, look at this. Rob, look at that. I've been thinking, if Hillary Clinton had won the election, if she had actually won, do you know how badly things would have gone for all of those people that are Trump supporters? I just want you to stop and think for a second. Let's pretend like you're on the winning side right now and Donald Trump is not president of the United States. Do you know what kind of blood would be running through the street? I know that you are, you're saying, Rob, I don't think, no, I really think I'm right about this. If Donald Trump had lost the election, many people who truly loved this guy, who wanted him to be president of the United States, blood would be running through parts of the streets of this country because they would be so fed up. They felt like this white men felt like this was an election that they had to win. They felt like this was an election that they could not forfeit. They, 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 li they literally felt like this was an election that they could not this, they could not sit at home. This is the reason why white women were pushed out there by their men. Bitch, go vote. Forget about the kitchen today. Go vote. You're a Republican, damn it. Go vote today. We need you to go vote. We need you and Harriet and all. And close the damn shop up. Close the damn beauty salon down. We need you to go vote. Forget taking care of the babies. I went and voted. You go vote now. They literally sent their wives into the voting booth and they went and they voted like crazy. Why? Because this is the last stand for white racist supremacist America. And if they had lost, if they had lost that battle, then they would have tried to win the war in the streets. So trust me, you folks are taking it well. I'm going to give you some credit. You're taking it well. At least you're being constructive. I mean, with the exception of the woman shitting on the Donald Trump sign. You, and I think that was in another country. But the point is, is that you folks are taking this very well. I, I told my students this week, I said, I know I've had students crying. I've had students that said that they're going to leave. I've had students that are literally in shock. I've had students that, and these are the students that actually thought that, you know, that she really shouldn't win anyway, but they're like in shock that Donald Trump actually won. So here's the thing. I think you guys are taking this very well. You really are. I give you some credit. You're taking it well. So at the end of the day, I do want you to understand this. If Donald Trump's people had won, we wouldn't have a country. Like, literally, we would have martial law right now. I truly believe these people have guns. They believe in killing people. That's what they believe in doing. That's what the NRA believes in doing. That's what these people are. These people are some of the worst people in the country. Okay, they're some of the worst people. These, these are fucking rednecks that don't like people that are black and brown and they don't like people that are gay they don't i mean i could keep going they don't like people with disabilities some of them even some of them even have kids with disabilities and they would be the first to kill their own damn kids these are just bad people 
Now, I know you're saying, Rob, you're going to take that back later. Somebody's going to expose you for that. I don't give a fuck what they say. I'm not taking that back. These folks don't like people with this. I mean, how else do you have a presidential candidate that sits up there and literally makes fun of a reporter with disabilities? That, that lets you know what kind of you know electorate he is going for. He literally makes fun of a reporter with disabilities. These people are not good people, okay? They're not good people. So if they had lost the election, just think about how 10 times better the protest would be. I've, I've seen the skirmishes in Oakland and some people, you know, they're upset and they're you know, clashing with the police over this. I get it. I understand it. But I think it's misplaced. I think it's misplaced because we're not going to dismantle the democracy that we are. We're not going to become a freaking third world country because a man has been elected president of the United States. And here's the why. Here's the why, because the Electoral College is a beautiful thing. What the Electoral College does, it's responsible for things like the end of slavery. The Electoral College is responsible for things like, I don't know, the end of Jim Crow. The reason why is because the Electoral College tells us that there is no particular state that has more advantage over any other state because of population. What it does is it gives every state its relative number of electoral votes. And as a result, every state has some representation and some stake in who becomes the president of the United States. It is not our fault. It is not the founding father's fault that the electoral college failed Hillary Clinton. It is Hillary Clinton's fault because she didn't get her ass to Wisconsin. It is Hillary Clinton's fault because she didn't get her ass to Michigan. It is Hillary Clinton's fault because she didn't spend enough time in Philadelphia. It is Hillary Clinton's fault because she couldn't win white damn women that are 56% voting against her. It is Hillary Clinton's fault, not the electoral college's fault. It is not us uh, and the onus is not on us to tear up our founding documents of this country and decide that we are no longer going to be American. See, the whole point of wanting Donald Trump not to be president is because he's going to do everything antithetical to us being American, to us being a founding country for democracy that's a model for the world. So we're not going to start by dismantling our own damn democracy for this idiot and for a bad candidate in Hillary Clinton. This is just enough is enough. Now here's the thing. Now this is the this is the last part and this is the warning part of the show and then I'm done. I'm going to go and I'm going to relax for a few days. And I may or may not be up back on Monday and Tuesday because I have this art show coming up. I'm just going to give you some forewarning. So just if I if I don't say anything until Wednesday, I, I want you to understand everything's OK. I just might take a little time off. Let me because I'm really I'm pissed off about it. I've been pissed off all morning. I've had a headache. I feel a lot better now. But let me just say this in conclusion because some very smart people are failing me right now. Some very smart people that I know, I love, I trust. But at the same time, I just have to bring everybody back to reality. And how I get there is what I said at the beginning, which is more like the conclusion. At the end of the day, sometimes when I'm frightened and when I'm scared, I have to do nothing. I literally have to do nothing. And again, sometimes that nothing doesn't mean that I don't clown Mount Everest. That means that I, I might not clown Mount Everest today. I might not climb it today. I might not climb it today, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. OK, sometimes you have to stop when you're doing nothing. This is the important part. A lot of people forget is think. That's the second thing is think about what you're doing. Think about where you are. Think about who you are. Think about what you're doing and what the implications of what you think you want to do will have on everyone else and what you know and what you love. Sometimes you can do the most damage to yourself by doing something in a haste in, in a very quick fashion, like I said, some things need to be done. Sometimes, you know, you need to fight that, that, that practical Capricorn. I have to do it. You have to fight that practical Capricorn. You have to fight that, that, that practical part of you that says, hey, you know what? Um, I, I should wait. I shouldn't do it. Sometimes you have to do something immediately. I don't think that getting rid of the Electoral College is the answer because it undoes what we do and we do so well, and that is democracy. So what, 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 is, what is interesting is what does this mean for all of those people that wish us harm, that live here and that live abroad, the Russians and the people that even live in this country that don't want America. They, they are happy to see you protesting out in the street. 
They are happy. Yes, let these bitches tear each other apart. That's exactly what we want you to do. Let them tear down their own constitution. That's exact. I told you, America is horrible. It's horrible. Its principles are horrible. This just takes us one step closer to the anarchy we want to see. Fuck those people. Let me just say this for the record. Fuck every single, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you very much. America will continue. There's another day ahead. And that's where I agree with Obama is the sun fucking rose today, didn't it? It will rise tomorrow. It will rise despite your demented, your hope, your desires, your freakish fantasies. America will rise again. Now, here's the thing. These people live among us. These people are also abroad. And they want America gone. Now, I want America to realize its promise of democracy. And this is where I'm different than these people. I want, and this is an important contrast. I want white people to understand that they are racist as fuck. I want them to understand that they are going to deliver on the promise of democracy. And damn it, Barack Obama didn't do any of that. He didn't do any of that, but I knew he wouldn't. That's why I didn't vote for him. Some of you voted for him, and now you're, you're, you're shocked at what's going on. You're like, well, I miss Obama already. I don't freaking miss Obama just because we've got one of the worst presidents getting ready. To, this is the where I stop and do nothing. This is where I think. Just because we have one of the worst presidents we have ever had take office, in just a few weeks, all right, he's going to take office. Doesn't mean that all of a sudden now I miss a really bad president that didn't speak to issues relative to black people. Okay? That doesn't mean that now all of a sudden I want Obama to stay in office. All right? There are people who believe that, you know, um, deleting Donald Trump would be the answer. Maybe killing him would be the answer. I said, that would be the worst thing you could, you could do. You know, Pence is one of those people that if you listen to the vice presidential debates, if you want to go back to around that time and listen to some of those shows, you should do that. If you never listened to those clips that I, those long ass clips from the debate that I ran where I dissected how this man is a racist, how he believes in systemic racial oppression. In other words, he believes that systemic racial oppression is okay. If you want him to be our president, you are crazy. All right. You want to see anarchy in this country? You, get rid of Donald Trump. Kill Donald Trump. You want to see blood run in the streets? Get rid of Donald Trump. These are people that don't think. These are people who are watching us, that are watching them, that hope that we're going to do something stupid. You know, I saw on Facebook and on social media the other day, and this is what it said. It said something like this that there are assassination attempts to Donald Trump's life that are through the roof. I can't believe they're any worse than for President Obama when he became president of the United States, but I'm sure they're just as bad. My point is, is that we better pray that nobody fucks with Donald Trump. We better pray that no one kills him. And the reason why is because it, it will be a, a litany of people, white racist supremacist bastards running through the streets, killing, beheading, and general destruction of mankind will happen as a result of it. And then Pence is going to be president. Oh, you know, what a joyous day that will be. You know, we have someone that's 10 times as worse become president of the United States of America. This is where, again, I tell you to stop what you're doing and think about the implications. See, I hope it's all coming together now because there are people that are watching us and they're hoping we do just that. There are people that are watching us, they're hoping we dismantle our country and we get rid of our electoral college and we get rid of the fairness that it gives to smaller states, that we get rid of the same thing that of course stops mob rule and stops us from having Jim Crow, that stops us from having slavery. We get rid of the same thing that is a check and balance from, from white racist supremacist bastards that overtake every because they were the majority at the time and they literally decide to make policy that only relates and reflects them. These, these are the same people that hope that we undo ourselves. And I'm warning you that these people exist. And some of them, some of them are actually intercepting and listening to this program. So what I want you to understand is that it is incumbent upon us right now to be great citizens to understand that this is democracy, that these people who are out there are not the same as the independent that's talking to you right now. See, the independent that's talking to you right now, America's independent voice, yours truly, myself, Rob Redding, 
I am concerned with changing the system. These people, in contrast, are determined to destroy the system, to destroy it completely. I don't want to destroy America completely. America is a great concept on paper. It just needs to be literally gutted and changed within. That's the only problem I have with America. It needs to live the systems in America need to be changed. Not just the people within the system, but the system needs to be changed, not destroyed and obliterated. And we need to have something else in its place. That makes those people kind of like Donald Trump that want to repeal and replace America. These people want to repeal and replace America. And you're helping them do it by giving them the first literally stick of dynamite by saying you want to get rid of the apparatus that makes us America. And that's the electoral college guys. Think about what you're doing. Stop and think for just one second. Sometimes the easiest answer is not the best. Just because we all, all of us, most of us listening are terrified of Donald Trump doesn't mean we need to tear up what America is and the promise of democracy. See, and now I'm concluding. The promise of democracy was explained to me by this professor. I, I've had I've had him on the program before. And he so adequately explained it to me, and it took me all the way to college to get this. The promise of democracy is this. The promise of democracy is the fact that America is not the greatest nation on the planet. This is where Donald Trump is fundamentally wrong and his followers are fundamentally wrong. It's not that it's the greatest nation on earth or that it has ever been great. It is that there is a promise that makes it great. That the promise of democracy is that one day we will be a country of these ideals and this belief that all men are created equal. That we are all going to be able to sit down at the table that we will all have a share and a stake in this great country, that we will all one day be great together. You know, Martin Luther King summed it up when he talked about little Negro babies and little white babies walking hand in hand. And he talked about us being one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. It is the promise of democracy. It is the promise of democracy that makes America great. Not the fact that we've already been there, but the fact that we're trying to get there. We're trying. And that's more than a lot of other countries. So when people keep telling you that, you know, America is not the best country, they're right. It's not. But at least we're striving to be better. All right. And I will even give it to you that America is not the greatest country. I've been the better but we're trying to be the, it is that ideal that embodies what is the envy of the world. The fact that we are trying to be the best and I'm not going to let anybody, anybody turn us around that, that that's, that's an old Negro spiritual. I'm not going to let nobody turn us around. I'm not going to let anybody decide that they're going to undo this country. I don't care how much I love them. I don't care how much I like them. I don't care how much I'm friends with them. I don't care. I don't care about Facebook. I don't care about Twitter. I don't care about Instagram or social media or some damn email from a fan. I'm not going to let anybody stop us from being the greatest country in the world and our pursuit of greatness, our pursuit of being the world leader of the world being the envy of the world is what America has always done. The shining city on the hill is what immigrants come to. And that's why we can't throw them out. The shining city on the hill is what immigrants have come to love. That's why we can't tell them that they're all criminals and illegals and that they need to be deported. These are people that are scared that are literally leaving this country right now because they are scared. And, I, and I've been there with them. I've been in a country illegally. I've been there without a visa. I've been there where you're concerned about the police knocking on your damn door. I understand their apprehension, but at the same time, we have to understand this is America. We don't have Gestapos running across the, the streets of our country. Yes, there's a time to act. There's going to be a time to climb Mount Everest. There's going to be a time to make provisions. There's going to be a time to do something as it relates to Donald Trump becoming president of the United States. 
But the time is not now. It is not time to tear up our cities. The time is not now to turn around and tear up our founding documents. The time is to understand that we have to stop what we're doing for a moment. We have to think about what we're doing. And then we need to act. Guys, I've had fun, but I gotta run. If I'm not here, I'm there. There is ReadingNewsReview.com on the World Wide Web. Reading like Otis sitting on the dock of the bay, baby. NewsReview.com on the World Wide Web. Yes, it's my family. No, it's not my money, which means I'm back your way. Monday through Friday after 4 p.m. with more of Reading News Review Unrestricted. <laughs>